our car, we send faxes from airports. It's no wonder we all want one of these. We want to be able to compute while we're on the road also. It's hard to find anyone these days who isn't in the market for a new notebook computer. What's new in portable computing here at this Spring Comdex? Well, there's pen-based input, mini notebooks, and color, color, color. The crowd pleaser in color laptop computers was this Zenout 325LC from Zenith. It's a 386 PC that runs at 25 megahertz. Despite all its features, the Zenote laptop weighs only six and a half pounds. It includes a 120 megabyte hard drive and four megs of RAM. The Active Matrix VGA display is bright and easy to see. The Zenote series of notebook PCs from Zenith features two other innovations. To simplify connecting your laptop to desktop peripherals, Zenith introduced the ReadyDesk Port Replicator. At only $150, it's a cost-effective alternative to traditional docking systems. The Zenote portables also incorporate an Intel chip that offers built-in LAN capability. Pre-configured client shells are installed on the hard drive to provide plug-and-play networking. Toshiba opted for speed over design innovation. It unveiled its new 486 color laptop. The T4400 SXC notebook runs at 25 megahertz. The display is an active matrix super VGA screen with 640 by 480 resolution. Toshiba says its color notebook will get three hours on a battery, and that in itself is quite an achievement. The key obstacles in delivering this technology to the marketplace were power consumption. The 486 architecture is a fairly power-intensive architecture compared to the 386 architecture current state-of-the-art notebooks. The other key performance issue was the backlighting of the screen. Color screens use almost three times as much power as the non-color screens. So the size of the battery turns out to be about a third of the weight of the machine. So we've reduced the size of everything else to maintain the notebook size of the machine while maintaining battery life. But new technology comes at a price. Both the Zenith and the Toshiba Color Notebooks list at over $7,000. At that price, the obvious question is, why do you need a color laptop? The driving factor that you'll see for color on portables is technology like Windows 3.1 that's introduced here at the show as shipping. Uh, a graphical user interface like Windows 3.1 is much easier to use in color. The other thing that we see used for a lot is presentation work. Uh, making color presentations is a major use for the 4400 based on our early customers. If you're still not convinced you need a color portable, how about a pen-based computer? Several companies are betting you won't want to fumble with a keyboard when you can point and draw directly onto the computer screen. The availability of the new Windows 3.1 for pen computing has brought new software applications to the pen-based portables. Calcom showed off its new display pad technology, which uses electromagnetic sensors to detect pen pressure and angle. This pad sensitivity makes it a good computer for artists, as well as a reliable platform for signature verification. Information written on the display pad can be simultaneously displayed on a standard PC monitor. The Travelite Pen Portable from DFM goes one step further and provides digital audio record and playback capability. Here it's demonstrated for use by hospital personnel to verbally record patient information in addition to inputting data with the pen directly onto the screen. Wacom's LCD integrated tablet has a unique feature, a cordless pen. It also beats the competition on cost with a starting price of $1,800. If ruggedness and durability are what you want, Microslate demonstrated how its notebook computer can take a licking and still keep on ticking. Two bodybuilders took turns standing on the Microslate Datalite 400 and throwing it across the floor. And yes, this first ever 486 pen-based computer was still working. ABC Computer from Hong Kong carved out a new category of notebook computer. Smaller than a laptop, but bigger than a palm top. The biggest feature may be a near-normal-sized keyboard in this tiny unit. And Librex introduced the first user-configurable notebook computer. The Librex T386SX features removable hard drives and a card slot for both memory and I.O. peripherals. A power-on battery feature also lets you change batteries without shutting down the computer in the middle of your work. The notebook's outer surface is made of a special non-slip material to help you keep a grip on it while removing its components. IBM also showed off a new pen notebook, but Big Blue's attention was not on portable computers. It was 
Amazon operating system. The OS2 versus Windows story is next. hardly find anyone running Windows. But at Spring Comdex 92, nearly half the show is devoted to nothing but Windows and Windows applications. And where you don't find Windows, you see IBM's new OS 2 bragging that it will run Windows, or HP's new New Age saying it will run Windows, and a stream of new Windows add-ons, add-ins, and enhancements. Comdex had never seen so much attention paid to operating systems, those invisible engines that run inside a computer. But at this context, it was an operating system war. IBM hit it against Microsoft. Some people are seeing it as a war, and some people in the press are, are positioning it as a war. Uh, I think that the, there's a decision that people are going to make in terms of the operating environment that they're going to run in. But in terms of applications, there's no reason you can't run your Microsoft Windows applications on top of OS2 2.0. We'll run them better. And uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're here to show. So uh, in terms of the Deep Pockets battle, we have a, a premier operating system here, a, a top-notch product, and, and we're marketing it as, as such. And uh, we think that, that just based on the interest we've been having here, uh, that the, uh, the market is going to, uh, to really respond to OS2.0. But Microsoft sees it another way. They say OS2 requires more computer power than most users have, and that Windows is the platform of choice for the typical 386 user. We think Windows is very well designed for that. That's exactly our design point. Now, there are other companies on the market, from companies that make workstations, using Unix, all kinds of different things. Um, IBM has a number of product offerings um, that are also trying to work in the market and find a, a, a base of customers. And we just think that um, for other companies to be successful, they're going to have to fit the same kind of market requirements that they want to become a standard operating system. Um, and that is, you need to run on computers that people own today, 3 or 4 megabytes or 86. IBM had the advantage of being in the unusual role of underdog in this complex, and editor Stuart Alsop says that has helped the Blue win some support. The battle has really been, I mean, since I stopped being friends a couple of years ago, the battle's really been for uh, IBM to find a way to compete in a marketplace that it's never really understood, that it's never taken to heart. And um, so the struggle over the past year with OS2 2.0 has been for IBM to understand how you develop personal computer software, uh, how you test it, how you deal with your customers. And, and so the remarkable thing, and probably the surprising thing at this particular show, has been the customer reaction to OS2. Um, you run around and you kind of overhear people watching the demos and, and you can kind of get an undercurrent of, gee, it looks like IBM is beginning to understand what it's doing. IBM tried to get users to fall in love with OS2 